The Oval Office address is a rarity for this president. So when it was reported that Barack Obama would be making just his third last night in prime time, many were expecting a big announcement. Instead, we got this. I am confident we will succeed in this mission because we are on the right side of history. Let's not forget that freedom is more powerful than fear. That we have always met challenges, whether war or depression, natural disasters or terrorist attacks, by coming together around our common ideals as one nation and one people. So long as we stay true to that tradition, I have no doubt that America will prevail. Afterwards, Donald Trump's tweet spoke for many. It read, is that all there is? Of course, others who would be present responded quickly as well. It was a disappointing speech, to say the least. I think not only did the president not to make things better tonight, I fear he may have made things worse in the minds of many Americans. I would go on offense. We have 3,500 American troops in Iraq. I would go up to 10,000, so we'd have the capability to reinforce the Iraqi security forces to destroy ISIL inside of Iraq. That's one plan, but would it work? Joining me now to talk more about all this are Seti Warren, the mayor of Newton and an Iraq war veteran. Good to see you, Mayor. Good to see you. Yusufi Wally, he's head of the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center. Good to see you, too. You and David Ensor, former director for communications and public uh, diplomacy in the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan, and former director of the Voice of America and now a Shorenstein fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Good to see all three of you. David, let me start with you, if I can. The goal, I assume, last night was to do two things. One, assure the American people we had a plan to destroy ISIS, to use the president's word, mm -hmm. and to keep Americans safe at home. Did he accomplish either of those goals? I think the president had to give a speech. Uh, there was no way to avoid getting out there and talking about what had happened. A lot of people are pretty worried, and with good reason, jittery. So uh, the president of the United States had to go out there, and he realized that. I'm not sure he thought he was going to enjoy it very much, and I don't think he did. But I think he accomplished one of the key things that he wanted to do, which was to say to the to Muslim American community, uh, you're one of us, you're with us. And to say to other Americans, remember, don't, ISIL wants to divide us, don't let them do that. And you know, we all know, there's going to be another attack. So we need to get ready for that, both domestically and in terms of our international policy. Would you give him the same kind of grade, Yusufi? Uh, and without a doubt, I mean, I think the section of the speech on uh, American Muslims was extremely strong. Uh, you know, I have a cousin-in-law that was also uh, in the army, and uh, to just hear those words from the president was extremely comforting. And, and I also want to say, you know, having the police commissioner come to our mosque and essentially have the same message, and then the mayor uh, recently also went on TV with the same message. Just, uh, I think our political leadership is acting with uh, a lot of integrity. You were pretty critical of this administration not so long ago. Earlier in the year, they had a gathering, the Justice Department did, and you said things like uh, they're targeting American Muslims exclusively, the whole concept is founded on the premise, your faith determines your propensity towards violence. So you think the president and the administration have done a turn, yes? Uh, well, I think what, what he said in the speech was phenomenal yesterday uh, in terms of his comments uh, regarding American Muslims. You know, here's, here's the thing that I think is, is critical. Uh, ISIL and this extremist ideology is certainly a problem. It needs to be rooted out. Um, I also think a very important question needs to be asked, which is, listen, we've had 355 mass shootings uh, the, this, I, year. this year. Um, and I think and two of them have been you know, inspired by ISIL. I think we also need to ask ourselves a, a, a question about what is some um, commonalities in those shootings? Uh, and and I, would I would suggest that there are some commonalities. I think a like lot what? of, for example, uh, I think a lot of these people are alienated. They're marginalized. And if we can look at the macro picture here and draw some critical conclusions, it will be helpful across the There are millions the board. of people alienated in this country. It's pretty hard to single them out. Seti, let me get you into this conversation. Uh, Mayor, uh, not only the GOP critical of what he had to say last night, before last night, the former head of counterterrorism at the Pentagon, the two-time interim director of the CIA, both under this president, were saying not enough, not intense enough, not fast enough. So his own people we're saying the president's plan really isn't going to get us from here to there. Well, I think um, he made it clear, the president made it clear, particularly uh, someone of concern like me, not only a veteran of the Iraq war, but, but a mayor, uh, to protect our cities, we have to do three things. First, he made it clear ISIL is not Islam. Um, second, he made it clear that we have to fight the ideology that this particular group is promoting. 
uh, ISIL. And third, he made it clear that we can't turn on one another. That, in fact, helps to inspire new recruits uh, with ISIL. So I think when I think about what he said, in addition to the work that he's doing uh, with other countries abroad, the acceleration mm -hmm. of the bombing, the acceleration of special operators, also uh, finding a political s solution in Syria, those things combined abroad and at home, I think, are extremely important. You know, I want to speak to both of you for a second. I'm actually yeah. surprised to hear what you both said, a, a positive vein about what the president said about Muslims. I, I, I understand he did say what Mayor Warren said a minute ago. He also said Muslim leaders here and around the globe have to continue working with us to decisively and unequivocally reject the hateful ideology, to speak out against not just acts of violence, also those interpretations of Islam. It sounds like, let me start with you for a second, it sounds like he's buying into this notion that we hear all the time, particularly from the Republicans, where are the Muslim leaders? Why are they not speaking out? Neither of you drew that from that. Is that is that correct? Well, I think he was saying, you know, just what you quoted him as saying, that he does want to see Muslims stand up and speak. Uh, many are, but it, it, more is better. Uh, th there's definitely a need for that. And yet that didn't trouble you at all, Yusuf, no? I, you know, I, I, listen, I, is there a, a problem with, you know, ISIL and extremist ideologies in certain Muslim communities across the world? Without a doubt. I mean, you see that to be the case in Syria and perhaps other places in, in the world. What I can certainly say is the reality for, for me on the ground, having been at this mosque for the last three and a half years, is that I have not come across a singular case where there's a person flir flirting in a deep way with the, this extremist ideology. And so, um, uh, but having said that, I think, you know, American Muslims, we see it as a responsibility when it comes to anything criminal or violent to be a part of the solution and working with other, other folks, whether it's law enforcement, city officials, to root out any form of violence. Incidentally, right before we went on the air, uh, uh, Donald Trump issued a statement calling for a complete shutdown, his words of Muslims entering the United States. Messaging is what, I guess, you elevated to an art form at Voice of America. Uh, how are we doing on, on that front? I mean, apparently, a lot of what he said last night was not just directed to the American people, but directed at potential allies in the Muslim world, around the world. Did he achieve that last night? It probably helped, but, uh, you know, this country, uh, has put a lot of its, uh, its, its emphasis on hard power. And really we need to... Military power. Yes, and I, I, we have the most effective military in, on earth and I hope we always keep it that way and that's great. But soft power too has its role. And when you can persuade people mm -hmm. peacefully by either the strength of your ideas or by honest journalism that's really honest, like Voice of America tries to do, uh, that wins you friends, that wins people over to your side without having to spend money or blow bombs up. Can we talk about convincing the American people, of just, just if we can for a second, starting with you, uh, Mayor Warren. President last night spoke yet again about the need to ban assault weapons. When a president says that, when I assume most of the American people know, there's about as much chance of that happening, I was going to say as Donald Trump being elected president, but I guess I can't say that anymore, very little chance that happened. Does he not lose credibility in terms of the whole issue of keeping us safe within the United States? I don't think he loses credibility at all. In it's fact, not going anywhere, though. We, we have got to make sure that we put safety rules, rules in place for guns. There's great technology out there, actually, that trace that traces guns to human beings. We need to introduce that. But I want to go back to a point that you made. Yeah. These misguided, despicable statements made by some candidates out there are actually fueling the recruitment of ISIL at home and abroad. Because it's it feeds the notion. It feeds the notion that we are against the entire Muslim community. We have to go back to our values as Americans and ensure that we push back against ISIL and the ideology. And we have to do it online. We have to do it within, within our communities, with the Muslim community. As the president said, there are many Muslims that, are, that wore the uniform like I did, that, are, that believe in this country, that are willing to die for this country. So those types of statements are completely irresponsible. We've got to push back against that. I, I the president say, did just, that very well last night. I just want to stay for one more minute on this assault weapon uh, ban. The president, as he said last night, can't even get through the Senate a proposal that says if you're on the no-fly list, you can't buy a gun. That couldn't even get through the Senate. When he says to the American people, we've got to ban assault weapons, which apparently a small majority of Americans would like, but everybody knows not going to happen. He says he doesn't lose credibility. Do you think he does? No, I don't, actually. I think when political leaders have the nerve to stand up and say what they stand for, what they believe is right, 
They even get respect from people who disagree with them. What did he not say last night very quickly that he should have, going right down the line, 15 seconds <clears throat> each? Look, I, I thought the president made a mistake three and a half years ago when he did not arm what was then, you could even use the word moderate. There were moderate Syrian opposition then. Assad might be gone by now if we'd done that. And I really, that's where my biggest beef is with the president on his policy. Didn't he spend a half billion dollars and what did he recruit, four or five people according to the military? Well, it was a, training, it was a training program. It clearly wasn't uh, managed very well. I'm talking about weapons here. Uh -huh. You know, Assad is vulnerable. Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't be a mess, you know, if, even if Assad had fallen. But I, I believe that we should have been more forceful earlier on. And now we've got... ISIL and, and other issues to, to contend with. Very quickly, 15 seconds, what should he have said that he didn't? Well, uh, <laughs> If there's anything. I, I, I was fairly pleased with, uh, like I said, the comments about American Muslims, but I just want to go back to the comments quickly. about, uh, you know, that Donald Trump t tweeted. Listen, one of the things that I think we, we, it's important to understand is that in many ways, mosques and mosques like ours that are really preaching the right message, and I'd argue that the vast majority of mosques are uh -huh. doing that, that in fact, if, if we can continue supporting these, these institutions, help the Muslim community build these institutions, that then w these institutions will help us win in the marketplace of ideas and marginalize the, all forms of extremist ideology. You have 10 seconds. The president needs to continue to do what he did last night. The one thing I would say is I want to see more of the president because we're having the vacuum filled by some other candidates, misguided statements that are actually putting America's security at risk in the short and long term. So I'd like to see, see the president continue to do what he did, and he should do it continually. Mayor, good to see you. I see you too. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much, David. Good to see you so as nice well. To see Thank you so much Thank for you. your time.